hello all. Uh, we've recently launched attack defense and within that our new capture the flag section. And I just wanted to run you through the very beginning first couple of steps of how to solve one of our CTFs. Now what we've tried to do is make sure that we include a lot of modern components uh, which are used in the enterprise and over the internet uh, just so that you know you get a much more real world hands-on. So this challenge actually involves playing with memcache servers. And if you have never heard about them, Google about it. Uh, this is a kind of server which is used very, very often uh, when it comes to creating highly scalable, super fast applications. The whole idea is to be able to cache frequently accessed, uh, but probably you know not changing too often data uh, into these high speed memory caches, which can be retrieved. Now, memcache servers can be distributed in nature. Uh, typically, they are supposed to be run in private networks in an isolated environment or on local host. But a lot of times, they end up getting inadvertently exposed to the internet. And this can cause a lot of security vulnerabilities. Now, there are ways to go ahead and protect them, like SASL and whatnot. But uh, what we found a lot of times when we've done assessments is this isn't the case. Anyway. So our lab is ready. Uh, if you notice, this tells us the Kali instance is on an IP 192XYZ and the target server is 192XY3. So we can find the X and Ys by doing IP ADDR. The only reason we need to do this is every single time you launch a lab, uh, we end up dynamically creating a software-based network and which ends up assigning itself a random address in that range, right? So the first thing we are actually going to do is, of course, verify uh, that every single thing that we've read is actually working from a networking perspective. So if I do an IP ADDR, I notice my Kali instance has an IP 192.231.2.2, uh, right? So let's try and ping .3. So we see we can ping the target server. Now let's go ahead and run nmap. It's going to do the service fingerprinting as well. It's just going to make sure enable all ports. This looks like something is on my mouse. Okay. Let's paste the IP address. See what we have. Okay, so what we see is there are two open ports. Uh, one of them is running HTTP, the other is running the memcached D server, right? Now the moment we see HTTP, of course, we are intrigued. We definitely want to go ahead and see what is running there. So I'm going to paste that IP address. Okay, so it looks like this is some kind of a single page app or you know, visibly a single page app. And this basically says you are not admin, which means probably we need some way to go ahead and get admin privileges. Okay. So the only other thing we seem to be left with is memcached. Of course, you could have tried, you know, a Durbuster or some of the other attacks as well. Uh, but, you know, typically when you see something like that, I want to explore all ports and all services first before jumping into any one component, right? So the next thing we have here is the memcached server. Now, if you've never used memcached, interacting with memcached servers is actually not quite difficult at all. Uh, you could literally tell net to them. So I can actually do a netcat, paste the IP address. Then after that, we have the port number. So netcat, I'm gonna go ahead. And then after that, 11211. So if you notice nothing is happening, if I put a question mark, it just says error. If I say help, again tells me an error. So this is really you now manually interacting with the memcached D server. Now, this is really where if you haven't done this, such CTFs which we've created gives you an excellent opportunity to learn more. So by Googling around, you arrive at memcached D's homepage. 
and let's actually go to the wiki page. Now this has some amount of documentation. If you go through it, you'd actually find what is of interest to us is API commands and usage FAQ. Now, once you go through this, you'd actually find that if you want to get all the items inside the cache, unfortunately, you need to know the key. The only other way out is if you go ahead and use a service command called cache dump. Now, this isn't something which is preferred, uh, but this is a quick way by which you can interact. Other ways include, of course, playing with the APIs, which go ahead and do a lot of things in the background. So the first command I'm going to run is stats. And if we go to the list of commands, you'd actually find that this ends up giving us some statistics about what is stored on the memcache server. So if you notice, we actually end up getting quite a bit of information. Now this is really where, again, you need to go ahead, you know, understand what is happening and learn more. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and now type in stats items to give me some statistics on the item store. Uh, so we see a bunch of stuff in here. The key thing to note is data in memcache is actually separated or rather segregated by slabs. And this little 17 here is the slab ID. So now if I want to look at uh, basically the list of items inside slab 17, what I do is use the debug maintenance command cache dump, so stats cache dump. And after that, I give the slab ID, which is 17 in this case, and then the maximum number of items to show within this slab. So I'm basically going to say, let's say 100. Now, the moment I hit an enter, I can actually see that I see a bunch of items which seem to be saying session followed by seemingly a random looking number. Uh, now, looks like if we combine this with what we observed in the web application, these might actually be session states getting stored, which is, of course, a very common use of memcache servers, right? Now, if you wanted to look at any of these, the actual value of what is inside, you could copy uh, the key name and then do a get operation, paste the key. And this would end up getting you the value corresponding to that key. So we can see some text. We can also see a lot of gibberish in here. Uh, one of the hunches when I actually end up seeing, you know, this kind of a dump is this is probably serialized in some way and will require more investigation, right? Uh, of how this is actually being serialized or maybe it isn't, maybe it's something else entirely. So I'm going to leave you here. Uh, you have to solve this challenge. There are multiple flags. So if you actually go back in here, we basically have three flags. Flag two and three can be identified on the target file system as they are part of the file name. And flag one is nothing but the admin cookie value, right? The name of the cookie is admin. Great. So hope you enjoyed this. Uh, we are trying our very best to make sure each of our CTF exercises is actually going to incorporate uh, you know, modern components and impart deep knowledge so that you can better prepare for real world scenarios. That's all for this video, guys. Thank you. Please use attack defense and, you know, write to us at, at security tube on Twitter. Me and the team, we always love hearing from you. Thank you.